We are supposed to speak about whether Europe made progress or not. The question is how do we evaluate that? I know it's not an easy thing, but let's let's give it a try. Uh, I guess uh, you try to look at the goals that you had set out and the priorities, and you try to measure in one way or another whether you made progress towards those goals or towards those priorities. And we will come back to that. Uh, we will look at that. But then there are these unexpected challenges. Uh, they were they were particularly numerous during the Luxembourg presidency. So th those challenges that were really not foreseen when we were drafting our, pri our priorities and our programs, and still had to face them. I mean, the presidency is the presidency. Also, you know, when things do not go as they were expected to go. Um, but then, of course, it's also about perception. Everybody has his or her opinion on um, facts uh, and to the, at the extent to which they are relevant for progress or do, in fact, uh, uh, constitute the progress. You know, the participants in this assembly, which is kind of an auto-evaluation, of course, but also then uh, observers, outside observers, uh, the press, uh, and, 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 and so forth. So uh, partners, uh, maybe. Uh, they are they are part of that process, and all of that you know gives a perception as to you know whether there has been progress or not. And we find out after we are through here to this uh, presentation. The overarching goal of uh, the Luxembourg Presidency was to work for a union of the citizens. The citizens, whether they be persons, businesses, other organizations, uh, ONGs, all of them our citizens, and that was the overarching goal for the European Union. Now, I think the, the difference between Luxembourg and perhaps other, including larger countries, and I'm sure there are other smaller countries uh, who are, you know, have, have a similar characteristic than, than, union, than, than Luxembourg, is we don't have an agenda. Uh, we do not have a national agenda in running the European Union, as that might be the case. For, for, for other countries. So we can be open about all those topics. We do not have to you know, move around them. We can be straightforward, we can be open. We can be an honest broker between the interests of larger members of, uh, of the European Union as, as we have demonstrated uh, in the past. Open, we can be reliable partners because you know there is no agenda. Uh, we can stick to our words uh, when it comes to uh, uh, sitting uh, around the table, uh, and you know we can be dynamic. You know we can. We are small. I always. I used to be part of that European Council discussion circus, if I may call it that way. Lots of meetings, uh, and so I used to chair one of those meetings. And um, uh, people came to me later on and said, "Well, we made so much progress. How how come?" And I always said, "Well, the only one I had to negotiate with was myself." Uh, so, I mean, we, are, we really could take individual responsibility as we did not have another political agenda when we were running these, uh, uh, these uh, groups of the uh, European Union. Well, I spoke about those uh, un numerous unprecedented <coughs> challenges, and according to which, of course, or based on which you also try to evaluate the, uh, uh, how, how a presidency, presidency runs uh, the affairs of Europe. Again, there were quite a few. Migration. Now, migration, as we shall see later, was part of our priorities, our agendas, but nobody expected the extent, the massive extent of, 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 of this, this migration that happened uh, during, during the Luxembourg uh, presidency uh, and that we had to, that we had to, uh, to deal with. So, um, the fight against terrorism, uh, of course, I mean, we had been kind of warned uh, in early 2015 with uh, the uh, Charlie Hebdo uh, events in, in Paris and then of course uh, we got reminded in Paris in, uh, in November with, uh, with, with the, the terrorist attacks. Uh, all of that of course determined certain urgencies that we had to, to deal with. Uh, 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 the economic and financial crisis. I mean on June 28th Greece closed its banks. And we were supposed to take over the presidency on July 1st. There, were, there was a referendum in Greece. There was a new government in Greece. Uh, the Minister of Finance 
uh, of, of Greece uh, resigned on July 6. And during that time, of course, it was necessary, particularly at the uh, 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 Bureau Zone Council, uh, but also at, at the level of the heads of states, to decide about policy, about how to tackle the Greek issues. Uh, I think it was, uh, I think, yeah, it was June 30th that Greece decided not to repay its loan to the IMF. And that meant, you know, in economic terms, basically bankruptcy. And still, the banks in Greece opened in July, on July 20th, after you know, there had been a referendum, and after, on July 16, we had found an agreement uh, with Greece about how to handle uh, their virtual bankruptcy and how to uh, go for a new, uh, a, a new um, uh, bailout uh, program. Then there was this growing instability uh, on the borders of Europe, not only speaking about the Middle East, uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, Northern Africa, uh, there's a lot of instability and you know those are things where Europe or those are areas and countries where Europe does feel some, some responsibility to handle that. And all of this uh, needed to, to be handled. And part of the policy program, the seventh priority, was indeed about you know, more political and diplomatic uh, 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 goals uh, to, to increase stability uh, around the, uh, the borders of, of Europe. And then, you know, not to forget about some of the internal issues of certain countries, at least in Europe, uh, that tend to you know, become more reclusive and you know, focus uh, on, on national uh, issues. Uh, you know, we've had elections, in particularly including our Benelux uh, countries, where you know, a, a party which is not necessarily pro-European has become a member of the government, uh, in, in a sense. And, so, uh, and there are similar tendencies in, in other EU, EU countries. Uh, Europe, Eastern European countries. I mean, uh, we will come back to that when we speak about migration and the issues that we've uh, we've found in uh, Hungary, Poland, uh, to some extent. Uh, uh, so, and and even you know, not to speak about certain countries who are trying to negotiate themselves a little bit out of some of the agreements that uh, we have uh, 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 taken under the Lisbon Treaty. And, 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 and previous treaties, uh, speaking about uh, about the UK currently negotiating, and that negotiation started on the Luxembourg uh, presidency um, to sort of uh, get some opt-outs, if I may call it that way, from uh, from certain rules. So much for the unexpected things, uh, unexpected and unprecedented uh, challenges, I would say, to to the European uh, Union as well. Um, now, let's look at what we thought, you know, what, were, what was expected, what we had hoped to work for and continued, however, to work for uh, as well. So, the priorities. Axel identified seven uh, major priorities of, uh, of its actions. Uh, uh, in the economic sphere, uh, it was about uh, investment, growth, employment, Important goals when you know you're coming out of a recession of six years, you know, and, and some of our members are still in recession uh, today and have gone through crisis situations. Uh, completing the European Union uh, 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 banking union uh, after the financial crisis, particularly where we where we recognised that we needed to move closer particularly in the, Euro in the Eurozone, in terms of uh, uh, banking rules and, and governance and uh, the way the markets are, are run. Uh, but also uh, single market, which has been on the agenda of basically every uh, country, completing the single market, uh, uh, an, an important uh, goal, while Luxembourg tried to focus very much on the digital aspects <laughs> of the single market, so the European digital uh, market uh, dimension was was uh, very high on the on the agenda for Luxembourg. And then the more social aspects, you know, related to migration, but also related to the co the continuous integration of the European market. As you integrate economically, as you integrate your financial markets. For those of you who studied a little bit of economics, you also need to integrate other markets, 
labor market social aspects of it. Otherwise, that social market, that employment market, that labor market actually uh, will just function, you know, as 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 its own regulator and not to the better of of its uh, operators. Uh, competitiveness, uh, praising European competitiveness in uh, a more global uh, and, and, and transparent uh, framework. Uh, there has been a lot of talk about tax uh, issues, uh, American companies in Europe, uh, for example. That's something that uh, we worked very much uh, together in the OECD framework uh, uh, under the uh, BAPS header, um, uh, BAPS, uh, uh, and we're coming back uh, to that point as well. And then more global uh, goals as well, promoting sustainable development in particularly also outside e the European uh, Union, inside of course, but also outside because these markets are so so connected, these topics are so connected, and strengthening the Union's uh, position in uh, at the global at the global stage. Uh, but we had uh, one topic, one goal that we, that has been existing for four years uh, and, and that have, we have been working towards for years in the European Union and that's the topic of better lawmaking. Better interaction between European institutions in the process of lawmaking uh, between the Parliament, between uh, the, uh, the Council, uh, between the Commission. Uh, so, uh, and we finally uh, made it to reach that sort of long-term goal of, of improving uh, our our lawmaking lawmaking process. So let's see what others say, and I leave it up to you to to see what Mr. Tusk uh, says. So he's the president of the other council, of the European Council, uh, and then uh, the president of the European Commission, who just said that it was a, a great success, but he didn't tell us uh, in in which regard. So uh, I hope I you know could convey. A little message to you, uh, you know, what, what that success could be. Uh, of course, it's a presidency which continues, which goes on. Uh, and for some of those topics, we might see perhaps only later uh, what uh, what comes out of it. So maybe it's too early to say. Thank you. Thank you very much.